Megan here welcome back to my YouTube channel so it is Monday and we just finished up lunch and the boys are inside playing and I thought I would come out here and take a peek at the gardens and see what's going on I noticed um, my foxgloves have bloomed and my David Austin rose is now in bloom um, so I thought I would take you guys and show you just a few little things that are popping up here and there in the garden I also have noticed that um, I bought about four foxglove plants from this nursery in town and I noticed all of these like yellow kind of things along the top of the stalk and I had a friend say that those are aphids and apparently aphids just suck the like sap or some sort of juice out of the plants out of plants we read about them we read about aphids in our homeschool lesson on ants and so um they can be beneficial to other insects because i guess other insects eat them but anyway they're not good for your plants because if they take over they can kill the plant and they can spread to other plants so anyway i thought today i would make up some of this insecticidal soap which i believe is just like some sort of ivory dish dish liquid soap um somebody said get ivory for sure and i can't remember why that was i'll have to look it up but they said get ivory soap water you can even put in a little oil like olive oil um, or cheap oil like canola or something that i normally wouldn't cook with but you can use that and you just put it in one of those spray bottles and you spray it on your plants that have the aphids like on the flowers on the stalks on the top and the underneath sides of the leaves everything like that and apparently the soap kills them and putting the oil in with the water creates like a slick coating on the plant so that any aphids that get knocked off can't climb back up i don't know i've never dealt with them before like i said we just read about them um but i'm gonna flip the camera around i'm gonna show you guys what i'm talking about and then i'll probably mix up some of that soap and spray my foxglove plants down today with that, hopefully we'll nip that problem in the bud and we won't have to deal with that anymore. All right, so you can see the tiny yellow aphids. Some of them are not so tiny. Some are quite large all over this foxglove on the flowers, mostly on the stalk, but some are on the leaves as well, all the way down the stalk. Um, I also noticed that the wild roses are finally blooming here around the house and so I thought it would be nice to make a wild rose elixir. Um, basically an elixir is where you take alcohol and honey and you combine those things with whatever herb that you're using. I like to use fresh rose petals um, because I feel like they have more volatile oil when you let them dry some of that volatile oil kind of disappears i still do dry my rose petals also because i like to add them to teas but i thought since they're in full bloom and there's so many around here which is why i call our property wild rose cottage there's so many around here um that i would harvest a good bit of the rose petals today and i can make that rose elixir with you guys it's really great for um, cardiovascular kinds of things rose a lot of the plants in the rose family are great for your cardiovascular system um, but it's also really good for your nervous system and emotional health. Um, rose, you can make, um, what am I thinking? Oh yeah, flower essences with the rose petals and that can be really helpful and balancing to your emotions. Um, yeah, so it's just really good stuff. <laughs> Charlie running around everywhere. Um, let me think what else I was gonna tell you guys about. Oh yeah, so oh, this weekend has been a crazy weekend. Um, we've been pretty busy yesterday was Judah's birthday and he turned 13 and I actually vlogged um, some of his birthday we celebrated with all of the cousins over at Dean's mom's house which is what we normally do on Sundays we all get together our whole family after church we do big pitch and meal well because it was his birthday he was expecting you know to have his birthday meal with his cousins but we secretly invited four or five of his friends to come and then we surprised him because he wasn't expecting them to be there so that was a lot of fun and they spent the whole day you know the little kids were playing in the little pool and the big kids were riding the horses and fishing and everybody was playing outside with their nerf stuff and football and baseball and all these things well the bigger kids decided to come over to our house along our back property we have like a big walking path and if you've watched any of my past vlogs you will have seen me walking on that path so 
the bigger kids decided to come over and ride the go-karts. So we you know we're taking kids back and forth to Dean's mom's house who lives across the road from us, um, checking on the kids, watching them ride, fixing the go-karts when they need to be. They got the four-wheeler out for a while, different things like that. Well, unfortunately, as I had gone back over to um, Dean's mom's house to check on Ezra, um, who my sister-in-laws were watching, and Dean was bringing a kid back over, and there were some adults around, just, you know, here and there, everybody, we had so many people, and everybody was, people were here, and at Dean's mom's house. Anyway, one of the kids flipped one of the go-karts and broke his arm, and it was a super unfortunate event because it was a really fun day, and it ended in a very bummery day, so his mom and I are friends, and it was, it was fine. Um, so I drove her down, I went down with her to drop him off at the hospital, of course, with all of the regulations right now, I didn't stay and didn't go in, but I just hung around in Johnson City in case she needed anything until we kind of heard what was going on. And um, he's okay, like he's in a temporary cast. He's gotta see the orthopedic doctor today to make sure where they set his bones that they're gonna stay put. And if they don't stay put, he's gonna need surgery. Oh, it's such a bummer, it's such a bummer when you like, get together with people and you're like trying to have this really fun day and then kids are being kids and not doing exactly what they were told to do <laughs> and something like that happens it is a bummer um, but anyway hopefully all is well and he will not need surgery um, yeah and hopefully everybody learned a good lesson about not racing and driving the go-karts slower um, yeah, so anyway, that was a bummery part of Judah's birthday. So I did record a little bit in the beginning. I recorded where um, he was surprised. I'll throw that clip in next. But obviously I didn't record the whole day because the day got sort of interrupted. Um, and I'm not gonna throw in all of his little birthday clips because that would just make this vlog way too long. a nice day today and since we're after it's after lunch and the boys don't have any of their homeschool stuff I would just take you guys around show you some quick little garden updates take you out back to the vegetable garden I don't think I've showed you guys the vegetable garden yet we've got it all planted out kind of waiting and watching for things to pop up here and there um, yeah show you this horrible aphid situation and see if we can rectify that and get that gone I'm sitting here staring at them right now Ugh. Anyway, um, and then make some Wild Rose Elixir and see what else we get into this week in this weekly vlog. All right, so here is a little update of our front garden bed. I planted some bleeding hearts, one right here on this side, and then one all the way down on the other end, and they're doing really well. My hydrangeas are looking nice. They're leafing out, getting full. Hostas are looking great. Um, and like I already mentioned there's a foxglove right there and it's starting to bloom you can see it's kind of like a deep purple mauvey pink kind of color but that will bloom a bit more and this geranium is still blooming over here and one of the boys or maybe the dog broke the top off of that bleeding heart so you can't see it anymore and then this garden isn't doing much of anything at the moment my hi rosie my um, alums, oh, they're so pretty, you guys. I've never grown these before. I love them. I love how, like, big and poofy they are. Aren't they pretty? This one's not fully even bloomed out. I guess all of them haven't yet, except for this one right here in the center, but it's so big. I just love it. Anyway, my um, lavender is looking really great. It's getting ready to bloom, too. You can see all the buds. 
You guys see all those buds starting? And my echinacea, it's got a lot of blooms on it. Sorry, I've got all this landscape fabric stuff right here because um, it has to go over the French drains in the yard where you lay rock and you put that on so that dirt doesn't clog up the holes of the pipes. Anyway, that's what that stuff is. But you can see my echinacea is blooming really well over here. It's looking good. Let's go look at my rose. Now, real quick before we go over to the other garden and see my rose, I want to show you this area. This is the area where all of the French drains are coming into. This was like a little drainage ditch from the pond. We're cleaning it out so that it'll have like nice steep banks and it'll be all smoothed out up through here eventually. And we'll have lots of plants, but you can already see we have um, some purple and yellow irises and we actually have some blue irises around too But they are blooming right now. So they look really pretty and a lot of them where we've done all the excavating have gotten kind of pulled out here So we have a bunch down here in the yard <laughs> But eventually they'll all be kind of gathered back in nicely around the edge of this little stream that will drain Our pond when we keep you know continuing to get all of this cleaned out and straightened out But I just want to show you guys those irises that were in bloom. They're really pretty right now And here are some of the blue irises little patch of those all right and here at the shop garden everything is looking great my blue fescue is getting its seeds like you can see the little sprigs of grass on it right there and this was an alum that I planted this year around this post which I still have my birdhouse down there we haven't put it on the top yet but you can see that it's it's finished it's flowering and it's kind of got its seed pods on it now so now it's just like little green balls instead of bright purple balls but anyway, and my um, ground cover here is all flowering, looking nice. Need to put some water in my bird bath. This is, I think it's called like Little Princess Cosmos. They're about two feet tall. They're not real big and tall like the other Cosmos. So this will be really nice. And then back here, I've got some other little flowers. I can't remember what they're called, but they're like a really pretty green flower. And there is a white foxglove that's blooming. This one over here is having a really difficult time this year. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but here are my poet's wife, the poet's wife. Yes, that's the name of it. Um, rose, it's a David Austin rose. I pruned and trimmed it back and it is huge. It's leaked out everywhere um, and it's getting some flowers on it. But you know, I have noticed they're kind of white. Let me see if I can tone this down. Yeah, they're really white instead of on the edges instead of all yellow they're normally completely yellow and this one's even getting some red in there it's kind of interesting i don't know i don't know what's going on with it but there are a ton of blooms this year yeah so i'm really happy that that is nice and big and full but i can definitely see where i'm gonna need to cut back on some of these really tall branches next year Anyway, this garden is looking nice and full. Okay, this whole tree is covered in a wild rose vine. You can see it going all the way up in there and it actually hangs down on the other side. This is a, I think called a curly willow, this tree. But anyway, this will be where I harvest some of the rose flowers. You can see they're kind of like a pinkish white and they have the yellow centers and they have five white petals that overlap one another They're really pretty anyway we'll get some of those here in just a little bit make some elixir and I wanted to quickly show you these guys these are some little toilet paper rolls that I filled with potting soil and I planted some seeds some lupine and then these are hollyhock seeds these are perennials and I didn't know where I wanted to plant them and I wanted to start them from seed just so I could see what would come up. I need to water them today. They're doing all right. And see, these are starting to get their true leaves so they're about ready to go out and I need to thin them out because some of them have two growing. This one has been broken, it looks like. Um, but you can see here the lupine leaves. They're looking good right there. Yeah, I'm excited to get these out because they're really pretty like pastel, very cottagey looking colors over here this one has a little bit of jewel tones in them but anyway I've got to figure out where I'm gonna plant these things on our property and get that going and then these um, I replanted these so some of these are I oh, can't even remember how I know there are um, this is sweet alyssum all in the front and then there's something here called like convolosa or some sort of kind of 
flat flower and I can't remember what this is in the back but it stands up really tall um, anyway I'm excited to see these continue to grow and look nice right here around the garage this side did not do too well but like I said I replanted it and you can see all of the alyssum is really growing well now um, I replanted some of this stuff so I'm hoping these seeds will pop up in the back and really get some good height on them soon I can see some of them are already starting to pop up right there so yeah I think this is gonna do okay I've got my little pots of culinary herbs here and then I've got some parsley on the other side of the patio I'm really excited to see how big this stuff gets and see if it'll grow and actually my um, rosemary here I took some little sprigs and pulled them off of the main roseberry and planted them along the sides and I'm gonna see if those will kind of take root and then grow big rosemary plants as well you can do this with rosemary and lavender you just kind of like pull um, a branch off of the main stem and it leaves like a little piece hanging down and you just plant it down in the soil and it'll grow roots and then here are chives and some sage and basil Okay, and here's my bird feeder and the little bed that I made around here. And I planted bare root plants, so they're taking a long time to kind of come up. And not all of them are even coming up, so I really don't know. You know, it's kind of like a waiting game. I'm not sure what's going to pop up. And I'm probably going to end up having to move things around in here, just depending on, you know, what pops up. I have to fill in some space. But anyway, here are two three of the same kind of plant. I can't remember what these are called, spicata something or another. And you can barely see right there is a clematis that's gonna grow and I'm gonna train it to grow up this pole here. And then here, 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 and here, some sort of blue sea holly plant that I planted. There should be more of them. And some of them have popped up later than others. This is all bird seed that the birds make a mess of they knock them out of the bird feeder sorry that's not focusing they knock them out of the bird feeder and then the seeds land on the ground and then I'm constantly picking out the grass seed I have a bunch of echinacea planted over here and it is taking its sweet time I don't know if it's gonna work or not or maybe it's just not gonna come up this year and it'll come up next year and then I planted a bunch of um, columbine seeds here but I don't think those are doing anything actually I covered them up with mulch and I may have covered them up too far but Regardless, whatever comes up here, if I need to dig stuff out and move it around, I'll do that and I'll add more stuff in next year. But I am excited to see that some of those roots that I bought from those bags at Walmart are actually growing. And there's more wild rose near the pond. Look at the pond, how yucky it looks. It's all of the pollen off of the pine trees around here. Kind of covers the surface of the water. And there's a bunch more wild rose. Like I said, it's everywhere through here, but that's okay. And here's our garden. We actually had some old dead trees that didn't cut down. We had the roots, the trunks, kind of, what do you call that? Stumps? Yeah, the stumps pulled out the other day. So we've got to deal with that. Um, okay, so I don't think I've shown you guys the garden. It's looking kind of rough some places. I need to get some water on it because it's so hot out here. In the front here, we have like along this side and then along the back side where the black is. We have watermelon seeds, squash, zucchini, and cucumbers. That's what's there. And then in these two rows, we have a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes. Some are big for sandwiches and slicing, and then others are like the little small Tommy toes that you can just pick off and eat. Then over here in these two rows, we have all of our peppers. So sweet peppers, and we have jalapenos, and some bell or banana peppers, I'm sorry. Those two rows, that's what has or that's what those rows have in them. We've got a few little onions at the beginning of each row here and then on the back side. I don't know if you guys can see them. We've never grown onions before, so we just bought these from this lady that we bought all of our plants from, and we just thought we'll try them and see how it goes. We'll see what the boys think about it. Um, now, I can't remember what's in these rows. I know that in this row over here, we have potatoes planted all the way down this row, and then I know we have peas and wax bush beans in one of these rows and we have okra in a different row and some stuff does look like it's popping up I can't tell if it's all grass we really need to kind of get in here and pick out what's what needs kind of weeded out in these pots here I had 
some plants and I saved the pots, but Dean planted my Swiss chard. So you can see it popping up there. And then there's another one way over there that has Swiss chard in it. Now we bought this sprinkler from Dollar General um, to water the garden in the evening. And it does an okay job, but it kind of misses the edges around here. So I have to actually hand water some of the plants around the edges. But we have a full garden and I'm hoping that it's a very productive garden this year. Let's go see, oh yeah, some of the watermelon are growing or one. Yeah, can you guys see that? I can't really tell. Oh yeah, see those two are popping up and here are some that are popping up. I don't see anything popping up right here. Ah, oh, there they are. They're popping up. And there's a good bit of Swiss chard right there coming up. And yeah, this one's popping up too. So we should have a good bit of watermelon over here. And I think that these are cucumbers. But everything's looking a bit droopy right now. It's the middle of the day and you're not supposed to water in the middle of the day when the sun's out. So they're going to get a good watering tonight. And we do need to come in here and kind of hoe up and get the grass out. And we're, we're planning on adding more wood chips to the walkways and then covering this with straw, covering each of the rows with straw. That's the plan. We're trying to not let the weeds get out of control this year in this garden. Okay guys, so I'm just sitting here watching some TV and I thought I would give myself a manicure. Um, I took my nail polish off a couple days ago. My nails are getting too long. They need trimmed and they're kind of breaking because they're getting long. And I typically like to have them just a little bit shorter. So I am going to cut them, file them, deal with cuticles. Um, what is this called? <laughs> buffing your nails um yeah do that and then I'm gonna do this nude manicure thing here I don't know where I got this I just actually found it in my box of all my goodies here nail stuff um and I like these Essie nail polishes uh they are definitely not the most natural but I do like them they work well this is a base coat then you do your color or whatever you're putting on this one you can barely see and then this is the top gel setter. It's not actually gel, but it, 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 um, is really strong. So it's kind of like gel nails and I like to change my nails and I usually like, sometimes I don't even wear anything for a while. So I don't like to do gel all the time on my nails just because it's really rough. Anyway, so I'm sitting here doing TV and this is before and I'll show you after just a bit. Okay. All finished. So not much different, but they're shorter and there's some polish on there. So all done. So Dean's mom bought the boys a trampoline at Sam's Club the other night because we told her about our trampoline having the hole in it because of Charlie, our sweet dog. <laughs> anyway, um, she had an old trampoline that was messed up, uh, but not the bottom. I don't know. Anyway, she was going to give us her old trampoline because she was getting a new one. And that was great for us because we just needed the mat part. Um, but anyway, so she was at Sam's Club the other night and they had one left and she just decided to buy it for us, which was really nice. So the boys are putting it together. Judah is at a friend's house and we have the other three boys here. Uriah, what you doing, bub? That looks like um, binoculars, right? Except you have three. <laughs> anyway. Got the frame. What's next after the frame, or after the frame is done? Matt. As I see you. So this is what our trampoline looks like at the moment. Of course, it didn't look this bad. It's gotten worse because the boys keep playing and they go up and down in and out of the trampoline through these holes now. But anyway, this is unsafe for them and they can't have their friends on the trampoline when their friends come over. So we were gonna buy a new mat and put it on there. Um, we actually looked on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for like a used mat like someone who was selling their trampoline our last trampoline um, at our house on the mountain we 
sold, we got rid of because we weren't taking it with us. And this was the one that we put up when we moved here. I think, I think this is what we put up when we moved here. Anyway, yes. it's only like a year and a half old, so Mama, it would have lasted a lot longer. Okay, so the boys have finished the trampoline and we moved it over here. We need to get some weed eating done around there. <laughs> See all that? Where the other trampoline was just a little bit bigger. So it's over here. We're gonna have to break that down um, before it kills the grass so soon. <laughs> but anyway, no holes in this one. Has a basketball net. I think the other one did too, but the boys broke it. So we had a conversation about not breaking this one. <laughs> Anyway, they're happy to have a new super bouncy trampoline that they can all jump on together without falling through. Hey guys, so I'm just jumping on really quick to wrap up this week's vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because YouTube likes that and I do too. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the bell to turn on notifications. And that way you always know when new weekly vlogs or other videos are available. I actually have a special video coming for you guys a little later this week. So click the bell and you won't miss out on that. Um, anyway, so thanks again for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.